All right, two two more things, just quickly. Really, I cannot believe that people are just so naive and so foolish. I guess it's because I'm naive, uh, you know, thinking that it should be painfully obvious that the weapons of mass destruction line wasn't true in Iraq. It's not true in Iran. I mean, they, they're not, you know, minutes away from creating a nuclear weapon. If you understood more mathematics and you understood more physics, you'd realize that enriching that uranium to get to the point where we could, they could make a bomb is, uh, you know, not seconds away. It takes uh, quite a bit of work. And the IEAA is in there saying, again, just like they were in Iraq, no, this is not the case. And they're being drowned out by the American mainstream media, right? The antique media doing their best to try and make it like, we got to go to war with Iraq, or excuse me, Iran. We just had a war with Iraq. You know, how long before we have to have another one? Bring the troops home. That's the crazy talk, really? You want to lay more blood and treasure, right? Your children on the altar of war in Iran. Really? Right? Iranians have attacked no one in the last 50 year, 100 years, 200 years. And the Persian Empire, these, this is the Persian Empire we're talking about. They've been around for quite some time. And if you think that the United States is going to go in there and, like, we're unable to... Like, Iran will be a more formidable enemy than Iraq was. Further, their allies are Russia and China, who are currently trading with them and have spent a considerable amount of money right, in the billions and billions of dollars building infrastructure there that they're not going to be very happy to have wiped out by United States bombs. Now, we've got guys in both governments in the United States and Israel that are crazy. They, have, they want to try to fulfill biblical prophecy. The eagle and the bear and the lion's dominion, you know the words. And our, these guys will stop at nothing. And if we go nuclear, it's a game, it's game over, guys. Right, we can't have World War III. We, I mean, you just can't have it. So now you have a choice between peace and war. One candidate speaks for peace. The rest of them speak for war. You choose. Were we able to keep the Red Scare from taking over the world? How about in Vietnam? Remember when they told you, come on, the, the older generation... You guys, they, they, they tricked you, didn't they? They tricked you into Vietnam, and they told you that if the communists took over Vietnam, it was the end of the world. That would be the first domino to fall, and then the whole world would be... Well, I'll tell you what. Vietnam, whether you like it or not, I mean, how you want to you know, use the metrics to describe how we won or lost that war. Uh, for most of the world, it looks like we lost that war. And they're still communists, and they didn't take over the world, and now we're trading with Vietnam. How about we do the same thing preemptively, <laughs> with Iran, rather than go, let's skip over the war part and just go directly to the trade part. Okay, the next part is they're going to try and steal this election again. And Democrats, you fools, you have had an election stolen from you more than once. Uh, this time they're doing it to the Republican candidate because he's anti-establishment, and the establishment absolutely hates him, which should be your absolute first clue as to be you know, who to vote for. And It's Ron Paul. And all these other issues, again, the main issue is the fact that a private central bank prints our money for us and loans it to it at interest, and that system is unsustainable. Simple as that. Who else didn't have a central bank? Well, let's see here. Libya didn't have a central bank. They do now. Um, Iran doesn't have it. They're not indebted to the bankers. They are our enemy. They are not indebted to the bankers. Get your guns of war and your weapons of, and go out there and get, right? Um, no. How about we trade with them? Can't have that. Uh, who else doesn't have a central bank? North Korea. Right? didn't have a central bank. It's like Mel Brooks <laughs> comedy routine. They didn't have a central bank. Uh, Saddam Hussein threatening to use the euro to settle gold or to settle in uh, transactions for oil with the euro instead of the U.S. dollar. And the next day he got invaded, basically. Right? Saddam Hussein, did, it, did, they, did Iraq have a central bank? Anyway... Look at the countries that are left on the planet that haven't been co-opted by the bankers and aren't in debt to the bankers. Right? Who's left? Those are the enemies. 
Now we've got this guy named Ron Paul that wants to get rid of the Central Bank of the United States. They're going to come up with every issue that they can come up with to, to take away from that. Because come back home. It's the Constitution at home, right? All, all enemies, foreign and domestic, is who you guys, that oath has been sworn to. Right? Uphold the Constitution against those enemies, foreign and domestic. Looks like we've got some domestic enemies that need some attention. Nobody wants to say. People that will, like, you know, try to steal the vote. People that will try to tell you that, you know, bring up the race card, bring up any other issue, bring up a drug war, bring up, you know, all these things. It's a smokescreen because the main thing is the main thing. The fact that we need freedom and liberty, and in order to have freedom and liberty, we have to have sound money. We have to have a currency that doesn't enslave us. This is the main thing. And all these other issues, ancillary. Because they're... There's just no getting around it. The medium of exchange, it is all about the money. You guys want to try and say that it's not all about the money? It's all about the money. And we need debt free currency. The system that we have is unsustainable. It's as simple as that. And are you guys fooled by this talk about weapons of mass destruction and all this? Other, and oh, he's going to legalize heroin. And oh, he's going to. Uh, blah, blah, and oh, he's against civil rights. And oh, he's against the EPA. And uh, I'm kind of. Some of the things of the EPA, I'm not so in favor of what they've done either. EPA, DEA, FDA. I mean, name these agencies. They're in the hip pockets of big corporations, and the decisions that are being made by these unelected bureaucrats are not beneficial to the populace. Congress has now, what, a 9% approval rating? Some of these agencies have probably less than that. I mean, nobody's in favor of the FDA drawing guns on farmers who are selling milk. I mean, we need to restore some sanity to this country. So yeah, getting rid of some of these departments and reining in some of these crazy agencies that are doing things, you know, that are just, the sanity has left much of our government. And the one guy that wants to restore the sanity, and the one guy that wants to come back to common sense principles of decency that Americans, you know, generally accept as being good and proper, like not going to war on a whim, right? If we go to war, oh, woe unto our enemies. We should go there, win the war, and come back home. These, these ridiculous wars that last forever, you know, 10 years, on and on and on, endless war, with no real, you know, we have no objective, we don't know if we've won or lost, we just keep fighting the war. And then our troops come home and commit suicide, and we have more deaths by suicide than by combat. This should be a clue also. But the main issue, all of that is a smokescreen. The main thing is the Federal Reserve. You just got to keep your eye on the ball. And the only way, I mean, we are many. We are many. They talk about the 90s, 90% and the one. It's probably even more than that. But it's the many and the few. It's us against the corporations. It's us against, you know, corporate governance. And the idea is that if you have one vote and the majority vote for Ron Paul and put him in office and then the majority vote for other Ron Paul Republicans and Ron Paul Democrats who will never call themselves Ron Paul Democrats but you get the idea then we have change in the government because Ron Paul can't do it all by himself and you know this we all know this but it, you know the dam would break if Ron Paul went in as president and then four years from now oh my goodness think about what happens then and believe me, your masters are thinking about what happens then. Right? What if we had peace on earth? What if we had free trade? What if we had, you know, all these things that seem to run counter, which seem to be common sense to all of us, but seem to run counter to their agenda? Anyway, secure your vote. Understand that you have the right to vote, but you also have, make, have to make sure that you understand that your vote is counted and that you know your vote was counted. Right? You vote in secret, but you don't count in secret. You want the, the Russians to be laughing at us. It's not who votes. It, it's who counts the votes. You, you should know that by now. Anyway, whether you vote for Ron Paul or not, you need to be able to understand that we have to secure the vote. That's step one to restoring the republic. And then we can fight about the issues all day long. Right? Who's got the better plan? You guys like indefinite detention, apparently, right? 
<laughs> Notice how that media has been silent on indefinite detention, and if Ron Paul mentions it, they cut him off. Right? That was a great clip. Starts talking about indefinite detention. Ooh, let's throw it back to the, right? Back to you, in the studio. Anyway, uh, we're running out of time when it, when it comes to restoring the republic. And you can choose constitution or not. You can choose sound money or not. You can choose to be a debt slave or not. You can choose self-governance or not. And all those choices are not given to you by the rest of the Republicans and the Democrats. They're given to you by one guy, and his name is Ron Paul. <laughs>